Hello friends, I am Greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Foundation Level Sample Paper Discussions where we are talking about tips, tricks and time management related to this examination. As a part of this particular tutorial, we are continuing with our chapter 4 and we have three more questions to be discussed from this particular chapter and we should be done with that. So to get started, the very first question for today we have is question number 27 and it says uh, which of the following best fits as an element of the checklist used in checklist based testing. So, so far we have discussed a lot about the checklist based uh, testing as a technique. Here we make use of a checklist which is more of like a test condition to be measured. Uh, while interacting with the product, which is one of the dynamic test techniques and uh, but does not make use of formal test cases and that's how it basically reduces our effort and time required to perform the required testing. And uh, the options have been given to us and let's quickly check that which of them could fit as one of the checklist item but others are not. Now option A clearly says uh, the developer made an error when implementing the code. So of course this is one of the uh, error which the developer is making so it's more of like an error which is being conducted but not a test condition which I should measure. So however I write test cases to test and identify these type of errors which are conducted by developer but this is not an item to be included in checklist. For example if somebody says hey you're writing a test case and one of your test cases is saying that the developer is not uh, you know ready with their programming skills and of course, you know that that could be one of the reasons for defect, but that's not your test case. Your test case would be to check the functionality where you think this developer would go wrong. So that is the point here. So of course, developer uh, has made an error. It's an error altogether, but not an item to be included in checklist to be measured. You would find it other way around in terms of interacting with the product. Option B says uh, the achieved statement coverage exceeds 85%. It's more of like uh, exit criteria, which is uh, kind of summarizing the amount of testing which is being conducted and the coverage being achieved. But it's not a level of testing or not a technique in terms of evaluating a particular functionality or non-functionality or maybe a particular feature uh, within the entire product. Option C is in line with that and option C says the program works correctly regarding functional and non-functional requirement. This statement is also good but this is a summarization like it's working fine from the functional and non-functional aspect. However, it's not a key element what exactly I should test in an application. Functional and non-functional are pretty big. I can further deep dive with unit testing, integration, testing, system testing, etc. And inside that I would have a test condition to measure. So again, functional and non-functional are certainly something what we measure, but not a candidate to be included as a cushion in the checklist. Whereas option D says uh, the error message are written in language that the user can understand. Now that's a example of like we are measuring the error message as one of the concrete element of the application that a user can understand by reading it. So all I'm writing a simple test here that I'm trying to check if the error messages are readable and understandable by the end user. And with that, I think we can very easily conclude the right answer for this particular question is D, that is the error message are written in the language that the user can understand is one of these best statement which fits as an element to uh, as a checklist in a checklist based testing. So point being made is sometimes we do understand what is checklist based testing, but when it looks uh, closely with the options, we might get a little confused and probably think uh, some of them are looking right or maybe they are looking good, but they are actually not. So you need to be very, very patient in terms of concluding with your right selection to the answer. Anyways, with that, let's move on to the next one. The next question we have is question number 28 and the question number 28 is saying, Consider the following acceptance criteria for a user story written from the perspective of an online store owner. Okay, given that the user is logged in and on the home page, when the user clicks on the add item button, then create item from a form should appear and the user should be able to input a name and price for this new item. In what format is the acceptance criteria written? I think, uh, when we started reading it, we felt that this question is really talking about something on the format and uh, 
what is user story, what is acceptance criteria and sort of thing. But it just turned out to be a very simple question. If you remember from the syllabus and tutorials, we clearly told you that there are two different ways to write acceptance criteria. And uh, that is the you know scenario based and rule oriented. That is scenario oriented and rule oriented. In scenario oriented, we make use of this method that is given when then. And when it comes to rule oriented, it's more of like bulleted points, numbered lists, list, etc. So I think this is ha this has nothing to justify, nothing to discuss. Rather, we can really be very, very straightforward to pick up the right answer here. But let's quickly check what the options are saying. The option A says, uh, is it rule oriented? B saying scenario oriented, C saying product oriented, D saying process oriented. First of all, product and pro process are not one of the way to write acceptance criteria. However, scenario and rule oriented are the two options what we use to write acceptance criteria for a user story. But as we already discussed, the right answer to this particular question is B, that is scenario oriented, is a way of writing acceptance criteria which makes use of given, when, then format. Whereas rule oriented makes use of the bulleted or numbered list to list the acceptance criteria. So this is how sometimes it could be very straightforward but narrated in a way that you start thinking about multiple things in order to conclude the answer but uh, sometimes it could be very very uh, straightforward as well. Let's go on to the next question. The next question we have is question number 29 and it says uh, your team analyzes the following user story in order to define the acceptance criteria. Okay so here we are asked to define the acceptance criteria for the given user story and the user story is as a registered customer I want to be able to view my previous orders on the company's website so that I can keep track of my purchases. I think uh, for us uh, as a common human, this is something which we do uh, quite often like when we shop online, we have a dashboard where we can always check our orders uh, which we have placed in past and currently placed as well which is probably uh, looking forward to come up uh, in the future. So you can just manage all your orders from there So you can compare your Amazon experience Flipkart experience or many other things The question is which of the following test cases will not be relevant for this user story now will not be That means the word not plays a vital role here because three of them looks like a test case But the fourth one should not okay, and that's what we're looking forward to find option a clearly says uh, input that is the customer logs into their account on the website and clicks on see order history button whereas the expected output is the system shows a list of customers previous order including the date order number and total cost looks absolutely fine because this is what i would try to measure if i'm having this user story given to me and could be created as one of the valid acceptance criteria to perform uh, this user story uh, as testable. So yes, I can click on this button and see the order history along with uh, the price, quantity, cost, etc., and all that. Now let's see the option B. Option B says uh, input as the customer clicks on the on an order form, uh, order from the order list and expected output says the system display the individual items purchased along with their price and quantities, which is pretty much in line with the option A and seems to be a very valid acceptance criteria. However, uh, here we are not talking about duplicacy, we are talking about which one should be included, which is not. It's more of like which one is an applicable acceptance criteria to this user story. So A and B perfectly looks fine to be included. Uh, however, we may say that, okay, if A is written, then B is not required. If B is written, A is not required to a certain extent, but yeah, both of them are one of the valid acceptance criteria to be included. Option C says uh, input the customer clicks uh, sort ascending button on the order history screen, whereas expected output for that should be the system should show the order history sorted by the order number in ascending order. So that's again one of the feature of this uh, uh, order management of a particular user account that if you want you can sort it by the order number or maybe by the date you shopped so sorting is one of the key option which we generally have. So it's again looking like a very perfect test to be conducted uh, for this particular scenario. Let's look at the option D which is remaining and it says uh, input an unregistered customer registers as a new customer with a valid email address that does not already exist in the customer database where is expected output the system accepts the registration and creates the account. 
Fantastic. That's one of the great tests to be included, but not for this user scenario. Because if you even read the first few words, which says that an unregistered customer, I think that is where the story gets over. Because if you look at the user story on the top, it clearly says as a registered customer. So this user story is not about creating an account. It's more about order history. So of course, it is a good test. D, D is a good test, but uh, not for the definition to order history, rather to create a new user account. So I think with that, we can easily conclude that the right answer for this particular question is D, that is input, an unregistered customer registers as a new customer with valid email address and does not already exist in the database. Uh, expected result, uh, that is the system accepts the registration and creates the account is not one of the acceptance criteria to be included for this particular user story. However, it is great for the registration related user story. So that's how basically the questions from the acceptance criteria and related concepts will be asked to you and you must be able to judge and conclude with the right option. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning. Thank you.